We're back into the action, folks, on the hottest show on the streets here in my own words with yours truly, Stephen M. Smith of Touchdown Alabama Magazine. We got the man, the myth, the bona fide legend in the building and recruiting Justin Smith here live in studios. But before we get started with that, huge news that has just broke. The Alabama Crimson Tide will not play USC to start the season. The game has been canceled. News has come out from you know our own Patrick Dowd who got the story for Touchdown down Alabama Magazine, so appreciate Patrick there for his diligence, but Alabama will not play Southern California to start the season as the Pac-12 is looking more and more alike. They will transition into that conference-only schedule, but we got Justin here live in studios, and Justin, biggest news happened late Wednesday night, and it took everybody by storm. Nobody thought that was happening. I didn't see it coming. A lot of folks didn't see it coming. I know you told me it, it, it hadn't even shocked you to see it happen. And that being a Kadarius Callaway, the athlete from the state of Mississippi, the three stars you have him on Touchdown Alabama Magazine's uh, board here. For 2021, he has committed to the Tide, was thought to be Mississippi State's guy, but Freddie Roach goes down there and gets Kadarius Callaway. Yeah, I think this is a intriguing pickup for the Tide in 2021 recruiting class. It's usually a surprise in each recruiting class. You always pick up a guy that basically comes out of nowhere and pretty much slaps everyone in the face. And Kadarius Callaway was definitely that guy in the 2021 class. So and would he? So, so, so would he be this year's? So would he be that version of Josh Jacobs? Or am I speaking way too much into into existence right now? Well, in terms of surprising coming in out of nowhere, I guess you can say that. But this is a great pickup for the tie. You're getting an athlete that stands at six foot and weighs 210 pounds. And taking a quick look, quick look at his film, there I was I almost thought that maybe the tie could possibly use use this guy on the offensive side of the football, possibly because of how explosive he is. He is a pure athlete. Alabama is getting in Kadarius Callaway, but it's an intriguing pickup for the tie with him becoming their third defensive back commit, most likely joining Devontae Smith and Kane Williams. And it also brings to question how many defensive backs will the, will the tie take in the 2021 recruiting class with so many other defensive backs on the board. Looking at the recruiting board, they still have Terry on Arnold, Jaquincy McKinstry, Jason Marshall, Kamari Lasseter, Kyrie Jackson, Dijon Warren. You can go on and on with the defensive backs the Tide still have on the board. They already have three guys committed. I think we enter now into the conversation of the Tide possibly pulling in six defensive backs in the, defensive backs in this 2021 recruiting class. It's going to be interesting to see how the Tide will use one Kadarius Callaway, especially you know should he sign. But the guy that but the the, the, the guys that. Alabama fans are really excited about just so happened to be those Brockemeyer twins, the, 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 the Texas legacy, the Brockemeyer twins, Tommy and James Brockemeyer. I remember you had told me that you got a chance to speak with their father, Blake Brockemeyer, here recently. What was that conversation like? Are they getting closer to a commitment date? What is the vibe? What is the feel now since we're in the month of July where the Brockemeyer twins are concerned? Well, I got a chance to talk with their dad, Blake Brockemeyer, on yesterday, and we talked about a lot of different things that they're currently working on. One of the more intriguing things that we talked about during that conversation was the training that him and his sons were doing during this quarantine and also during the summer as they prepare for their senior season at All Saints Episcopal School in Texas. They are really training different. It's a different training that they are doing that's a little bit different from what most offensive line coaches teach. Of course, Blake Brockemeyer knows his stuff. This is, a, this is a former NFL offensive lineman who was drafted in the first round of the NFL draft, so he knows what he's talking about with the defensive Line defense alignment in today's football game beginning to get more and more better, continuing to just get all around more athletic. If you're looking at the defense line groups across the landscape of football, they're getting pretty athletic, and that, that is one of the reasons why Blake Brockemeyer is training his sons a little bit different. I still feel the tide is in a great position after my conversation with um, Blake Brockemeyer. I still do feel the decision could come this month. Of course, you guys, everyone can read more about um, what he actually said to me on touchdownalabama.com in that subscriber-only article. Folks, if you're just tuning in to the show, we got the man, the myth, the boots on the ground here on the recruiting trail. Justin Smith of Touchdown Alabama Magazine in studio right now. And Justin, so Kendrick Blackshear, here comes another interesting name. The young man of Duncanville, Texas. Now, I remember when you've spoken with him or got information on him, you, people thought that you know his commitment could come on July 15th. Others have felt like maybe it may come later than that. So what is the feeling right now on the linebacker? 
Mack or Kendrick Blackshear. Well, we have to look at um, July 15th now since he went, on his, he went on his Instagram live and basically said that's the date that he is looking at, July 15th or possibly two weeks from now. Of course, Kendrick Blackshear is a guy Alabama has been recruiting for quite some time now, offering him in 2018, continuing to build that relationship. This guy will miss his junior season of football due to an ACL injury, which is something the Tide is quite familiar with when it comes to the linebacker position. Please don't ever <laughs> remind me of that again, Justin. <laughs> Yeah, but um, with Kendrick Blackshear, this is a guy who showed during his sophomore season a lot of good things. He was able to take a lot of great angles in pursuit of the football, show some great closing speed, and he was a really he was really a thumper at that inside linebacker position. He he's used to playing that traditional inside linebacker role, so this will be a great pickup for the Tide in the 2021 recruiting class if they were to pull in Kendrick Blackshear. And with you stating that, I know a lot of Alabama fans don't want to bring up ACL and Tide linebackers, but this may be a reason why the Tide can pull in Kendrick Blackshear. You see also with the Tide's um, medical staff, they have been able to train with those guys and get those guys back to 100% in a relative short period of time when it comes to the ACL injury. If I'm Kendrick Blackshear, I see a coaching staff and a medical staff that, that has experience with that. I'm looking like, yo, they have experience at um, re rebounding guys who have an ACL injury. If I go there, I know I'll be well taken care of if this problem ever arises again. So, Justin, another guy here, I don't know if he has any relation to Deron Payne, but we've got Damon or Damon Payne, a defensive tackle prospect here, another guy that set his commitment date for July the 26th. When you look at Payne's tape, Payne's film, what do you see? What do you like about him? Could he potentially be a guy to come to Alabama? Well, what I really like about his um, what I really like about his game is his speed off the line. I think it's pretty incredible. Just watching his film, it almost looks as if he's in the backfield before the ball is even snapped. And going back to what Blake Brockemeyer told me about defense alignment becoming um, better um, by the year and by the days, I think DeMond Payne really fits that um, mold of becoming a, a tra untraditional um, defensive tackle guy with a lot of speed at 6'3", possibly 290 pounds now, a guy who's not really that 300-pound monster kid, a guy who's using his speed and agility more at that defensive tackle position. So I think this will be a huge pickup for the Titans in 2021 recruiting class, quite possibly the top defensive tackle in the nation. Folks, we got Justin Smith, the lead scout and recruiting analyst, boots on the ground here for Touchdown Alabama Magazine, live here on today's show. And Justin, so as after, after breaking down some of the main guys here that are looking to make that move to commit to Alabama, you have other targets here who have you know put out top five lists, top ten lists, what have you. Who are some of the guys that have been putting out these lists or some of the guys have gotten you know, some offers for Alabama, whether it's 2021 or beyond, that are starting to kind of rise here on the board? I guess you have to look at the guys who have most recently dropped their top school list when it comes to the 2021 recruiting class, five-star defensive end Corey Foreman, who is quite possibly the top player in the 2021 recruiting class. He did drop that top seven and included the Tide. He is a former Clemson commit. What that top seven shows me is that the fact the Tide is still in contact with them. They are still a player in this recruitment, so it's definitely something to keep your eyes on with Corey Foreman being a five-star defensive end out of California. Alabama was also included in that top five released by Tyreek Sapp, a four-star defensive end out of St. Thomas Aquinas, who will play with the Tide's other um, defensive end commit in Dallas Turner on next season so that could be something to take a look at of course the Tide ha has had some success at St. Thomas Aquinas pulling in pulling in um Braylon Ingram along with um the safety that they pull in battle so I think this is a I think this is something to definitely look at. Tyreek Sapp dropping that top five. It's also pretty intriguing with them dropping that top five, with them currently being committed to Florida. You don't see guys who committed elsewhere dropping top school list, but I think this shows that he wants to take official visits. It is, it is five schools included in that top five, so maybe he wants to take five official visits. So that, that, those are the guys I would take a look at. Corey Foreman, also Tyreek Sapp. Just talk about right now, Justin, just the hunger of this coaching staff. I know the 20, you know, 21 clan started off slow with the coronavirus and people not getting, being able to have those unofficial and official visits. But it just seems like Saban and the staff, whether it's been the Zoom calls, whether it's been FaceTime, whether it's just finding ways to push different guys, go ahead on, commit now, get your spot now, and we'll work with you as it goes along. What has kicked off this hunger? Because ever since Deontay 
Jamie Lawson. You look at it, nine straight guys. You've been, they've been attacking the state of Florida. What has attributed to this hunger uh, from everybody on the staff? Well, I think this is something that's impacting the whole recruiting landscape. You're looking at the recruiting dead period being extended by the month. Now it's extended through August 31st, guys don't know when they're going to take visits. So you see a lot of guys committing to schools that they haven't visited recently, looking at the tides. Recent commits, Kadarius Callaway, Christian Leary, all of those guys have not visited Alabama anytime soon. So that is something to take a look at as well, just looking at all of those different guys who have made a verbal commitment to schools that they have not visited yet. And this is something that we're seeing across the nation as well. So it's definitely something to keep your eyes on. I just think the recruiting landscape is changing in terms of guys – don't really um, have to take visits. They're doing virtual visits a lot. I think Alabama is seeing that as well. Maybe they will maybe not take any more visits, get any more visits possibly. I know that is something that Blake Brockemeyer brought up in our conversation. He doesn't feel that any more visits are going to happen. Of course, he is a former support staff member at SMU, so he has some experience in the college coaching ranks. So, just when you look at guys that commit, right, you look at guys that commit and they're able to – you know, have an impact on other guys trying to get them to commit as well. When you look at a Kane Williams or a Jai Hall, who's done a phenomenal job on this recruiting trail, bringing other guys in. What do you think goes into that, seeing how you've got guys that have committed, but they are bent on making sure this is my teammate. You know, that guy's my best friend. I, I got to get him to come to Bama or he's got to come to Bama. What's kind of sort of sparked this off, seeing more and more guys now bringing in best friends, bringing in high school teammates, bringing in maybe even sometimes family members to come to the Crimson Tide to play for this program. I think that goes back to another thing about the current recruiting landscape. You see after a college football game, you see all of these guys from different teams come up after the game shaking each other's hands because they really know each other. That goes back to the relationship they have built years before then. These guys are connected more than ever, whether that is social media, going to all of these different camps, going back to going to camps together in the 70s, in eighth grade in middle school. They continue to go to camps together throughout high school. They participate in all of those All-America games. They participate in a Nike opening together. So they really build a relationship. They really know each other, especially through social media, the 707 realm, so many different outlets where, where, where recruits across the nation get a chance to interact with each other. So that really helps. And I know going back to my conversation with the Tides 2022 four-star commit Jeremiah Alexander he actually shared with me the fact that they have a group chat with some of the top recruits in the 2022 recruiting class and they just talk just constantly back and forth about different things also talking about encouraging one another to go to the school that one is committed to so these kids are connected more than ever Folks, if you're just tuning into the show, as always, he's Justin Smith, the lead scouting and recruiting analyst for Touchdown Alabama Magazine. This is the boots on the ground, scouting every athlete, recruiting every athlete. He's got a cot, pillow, blanket at every recruit's house. Also, check out Justin's show, The Process, every Tuesday and Thursday on Touchdown Alabama Magazine's YouTube channel. Justin, as always, we appreciate your insight, your expertise on the recruiting trail. Upon our return, we jump back into your phone calls, your thoughts, your tweets, your chats, your concerns after this. Town Menswear in the University Mall in Tuscaloosa. Touchdown Alabama Magazine is Alabama football's premier publication. A subscription to Touchdown Alabama Magazine is the perfect gift for any Alabama fan. For exclusive news and information, recruiting updates, a free annual print magazine, and more, go to touchdownalabama.com and click join. Only $5.95 per month or pay $49.95 for a full year subscription. That's a saving of almost $22. Go to touchdownalabama.com today and roll tide. Thank you for watching Touchdown Alabama Magazine's YouTube channel. To continue to get the best in Alabama football content, subscribe here and turn on your notifications to stay connected with the hottest shows covering your Crimson Tide.